Howdy, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about one of the most important things in DaVinci Resolve, and that is RenderCat. We're going to talk about the three different types of RenderCat. One, you probably shouldn't use, in my opinion, and the other two, how they are very similar, but work slightly different to each other. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk to you about speeding up Resolve and getting a smoother and better playback. So we have two clips here. So we have one that's shot on Brawer 4K, and as you can see, it's not running particularly well. And then we have some Ari footage, which is shot on 4K, ProRes 4444. And as you can see, we're getting perfect playback. So we don't have a problem with this clip. Normally what you would do, if you're using raw footage or Brawer footage, you would optimize that media to get a smoother playback. But because we're talking about render cache today, we won't be doing that. How do we do render cache and where is it located? If you don't know where render cache is, you can come down under your master settings, come down to your optimized media and render cache. This is where you choose your settings, how you want your video to be played back after it's cached. So it's just down here, render cache format. This is obviously for optimized media format, proxy media format, proxy media resolution, etc., etc. So today we're going to be focusing on render cache. Here is all your options. Now I recommend being in a lower one. So for me, I'm on the Windows. So this would just be QuickTime for Apple, I'm assuming. This is basically the same as QuickTime. So DNX HRLB would be the same as QuickTime LB and then QuickTime HQ, et cetera. So you want to use a lower one if you have a slower computer. So today let's just go with DNX HR. So how do our free render cache differ from each other? If we want to do our render cache, then of course we have to set them up. So you would go up to playback, then you'd go to render cache, and this is where you would choose the two out of the three render cache. Now to choose the other one, you right click on your clip here, and then you would go to render cache color output. But at the moment, let's focus on smart and user. So we come up to playback here, then we go down render cache, and then you would select which one. Now, first off, we're gonna select smart. Now I want you to pay attention to this timeline here. And this is the timeline for our broad footage, which is a bit jittery, okay? So if we come back to playback, render cache, smart, as you can see, DaVinci Resolve has realized that that footage needs to be cached to play properly. And as you can see, now we're getting a perfect playback. So the way that smart render cache works is DaVinci Resolve will basically cache any node or in this point, any clip that it thinks it needs to cache to get smooth playback. So with our Blackmagic Pocket footage Brawl, DaVinci Resolve has decided this needs to be cached. But if you look at our ARI footage, this actually hasn't changed at all. Now we can see this by this blue line, and this means it has been cached. So we come back to playback, render cache, choose none. As you can see, that blue line disappears. But if we go back to playback, render cache, smart, that blue line appears. Now, if that line was red, that means DaVinci Resolve is caching that clip or node. But again, with our ARI footage, because it already was running well, DaVinci Resolve has decided we don't need to cache this particular clip. So in terms of a node, what would DaVinci Resolve think it needs to cache? Well, it's going to cache anything that has an effect on it. So in our effects panel in DaVinci Resolve Studio, or if we put noise reduction on or motion reduction, it's going to cache that. Or any other FX plugin that you've put in Resolve, DaVinci Resolve is automatically going to cache that. So let's say we chuck on some noise reduction. So we'll put the tiniest bit amount on. Now, as you can see, we have a red line around our node here, and that's saying that that node is being cached. Also, you may have noticed this line was red and then it went blue. That is DaVinci Resolve rendering that node. So this node here obviously represents this timeline here. So when this is blue, this will be blue at the exact same time. So they work in unison, basically. Just a quick recap, anything DaVinci Resolve thinks it needs to cache, 
OFX noise reduction or anything like that, it's going to cache that particular node. But this is really important. It's only caching that node. It's not doing a cache on this node here or even this clip here. Now, this black magic one is being cached on this clip here. So as you can see, we haven't got any caching going on on these two nodes here. Well, let's jump back to the ARI one real quick. Now, I'm going to copy this node by pressing Control C. Then I'm going to reset this node. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my playback render cache. Now, I'm going to choose user. And then I'm going to paste it on. So Control V. Now, let's see if we can get smooth playback, even though we have this noise reduction on. Now, remember, we don't actually have a lot of noise reduction on. So our playback might actually be pretty good. So let's play and find out. Now, as you can see, we're actually getting perfect playback. So we didn't need to actually cache that node after all. So what does it mean to use user instead of smart? With user, we're telling Resolve what we want to cache. We're not letting Resolve make up its mind. We're telling Resolve what we want to cache and what we don't want to cache. So if we come back to our Blackmagic Pocket clip here, we're getting choppy playback again. That's because this clip here is no longer cached. So we go back to our Ari footage. We're still getting perfect playback and we have that noise reduction on. But let's say we did need to cache this node. So let's come down here to Temporal and let's crank it right up. So let's see if we can make Resolve play choppy playback and for better large now let's play it back as you can see we're getting terrible playback now that's because we've put out a lot of effects on way more than we normally would so how do we get resolve to cache this if it doesn't know it needs to cache this node well all we have to do is selecting this node here, right click, come down to node cache, and you select on. Now, you see auto here, and you would think that that means DaVinci Resolve is going to cache that node, but actually, auto refers to smart, it doesn't actually refer to user. Come back down to here, right click, node cache, and then select on. Now, what Resolve is going to do is going to cache this node so we can get smooth playback. So we'll just keep ahead a little bit and we'll let DaVinci Resolve do its caching because we have a lot of effects on. So this might take a little bit of time. So now we have smooth playback. Now the image looks terrible, of course, because we have way too much noise reduction on, more than we would ever use. But then why would we ever use user and not smart? Well, that's because Every time we cache a node or a clip, we're actually creating space onto our hard drive. And the more space you have on your hard drive, the slower DaVinci Resolve is actually going to run. In moments like this, yes, this would be perfect for DaVinci Resolve doing its smart cache. And again, for the Blackmagic Pocket, again, that would be perfect to cache that video. But for something like this, you'd probably just use Optimize Media anyway at the start of your project. So you wouldn't need to cache this file anyway. But if we were to reset this node, we are getting smooth playback. So we don't actually need DaVinci Resolve to render this node. So we're saving space on our computer. But if you're using user, that means you have to be more hands-on with doing your cache than you would be if you were doing smart. So again, smart is Resolve making all the decisions for you in terms of what you're going to cache and what you're not going to cache. And user is you telling Resolve what you want to cache and what you don't want to cache. Now, also, just a quick heads up. If you reset your node, but you still have node cache on, then this node is actually still cached. And it will create a little bit of space in your computer. So just be aware of that. Every time you do cache, you are creating more space on your computer.
So let's just get rid of this node. So let's do the last render cache and see how that works. So let's go back to playback, render cache, and instead of user, we're going to go to smart. And again, this is resolve making the decision of what it's going to cache and what it's not going to cache. But with our last one, it does something a little bit different and something I'm not a big fan of. On our clip here, we're going to right click. Then we're going to go to render cache color output. Now, remember, we didn't need to cache this video, but Resolve has decided we do need to cache this. Even though before we had this on playback render cache smart, it was never cached. Now, every decision we make, every little minute change we make, we are going to cache. So let's say we want to build a simple contrast curve. We go down here, and as you can see, we're not cached. Resolve has recached this whole clip from this small change. So we come up here, leave it for a little bit. Again, red line. That means DaVinci Resolve is recaching that node. Now, every change you make, we just made a new node, DaVinci Resolve is recaching it. It can be the smallest change and Resolve will recache every time. So let's play and see if we get smooth playback as we're making changes to our clip. So as you can see, we're making these changes, but it's not actually real time. And that is because Resolve is trying to keep up and cache every change we make. And the problem with this is, the bigger problem with this is, is that it's slowing down your work, plus it is creating a lot of space on your computer. Because not only is it doing a cache on this node, but it's actually doing a cache on your whole clip. Because when we do right click, render cache color output, we're telling Resolve, we want to render cache this entire clip. It's slowing down your workflow, plus it is creating a lot of space on your computer. So which render cache would I recommend? Well, that all comes down to a computer. So if you have a really fast computer, then I would suggest playback render cache user. That way you don't have to wait while DaVinci Resolve does its cache and you're saving space on your computer, which means more space, the faster DaVinci Resolve should run. If you have a slower computer and you're finding playback to be troubling, then playback render cache smart. This way you don't have to think about those render cache and you can let DaVinci Resolve do all the thinking for you. And finally, I wouldn't recommend render cache color output. Simply put, it's gonna slow down your work and it's gonna create a lot of space on your computer. And again, we don't want that. So just a quick recap, playback render cache smart is DaVinci Resolve making all the decisions of which should be cached and should not be cached for nodes and for clips, so any OFX, noise reduction, those type of things, Resolve will automatically cache. If it's set to auto, it will automatically cache that. Now, for render cache user, we are telling Resolve what we need to cache and what we don't want to cache. And to make sure it is going to cache this node, you would right click, node cache on. That way, Resolve will cache that node. So I've been talking about render cache making a lot of space on your computer. How do we find that space? And more importantly, how do we delete that space? So if we come down to settings down here, and again, we're in master settings. If we come right to the bottom, here we can see our cache files location, our proxy file location, and our still file location. So with cache, we can click browse and that'll take us to all those cache files we've made. So I've barely done any rendering in this clip. But if we go to videos, cache clip, properties, we've already done 31 gigabytes of space. I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? 
That's a lot of space in a very short amount of time. Imagine if we were doing a one and a half hour film, imagine the space we would use doing that. So that could be another reason why you would choose user and not smart when you're doing your render cache. So how do we delete that? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So you can come up to playback, delete render cache and select all, and then just delete. And that's going to delete all your render cache. So I would recommend that after you've done your delivery, then you would go back to playback, delete render cache. But the thing that I like to do, once I've finished a project, I will actually go into my cache folder and I will manually delete it all. That way I know for sure that this has all been deleted and it's no longer taking up all that space on my computer. So with my settings, I usually have it on low format. DNX, HR, LB is a good one. And I have background caching after one second. So that means every time I'm not doing something and Resolve needs to cache something, it'll cache after one second of me not doing something. Now, if you're struggling with playback and Resolve, then I would recommend changing your timeline resolution from let's say 4K, if you're working with 4K footage, to 1080p footage. But then when you export, make sure to export in 4K footage, obviously. And then again, with your playback, make sure how your playback set up correctly and you'll get better playback. But that's it for today. Render cache, very important, very important to know. It will save you a lot of time. And just to make sure to choose the right one that works for you. Just because one works for me, maybe that doesn't work for you. But if you set your render cache up properly and your other settings up properly, then you're going to get smooth playback in Resolve, even if you're working on a lower end computer. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really, <laughs> for some reason, I really find render cache very interesting. So I hope you found it interesting too. If you want, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment below anything else you want to see. Thanks again for watching. I've been Drew from Gringo Productions. Have a great day.